So Donald Trump uh, convicted on 34 counts. We're going to go through everything that you're going to be hearing. A lot of people debunked the sort of lies that the uh, right wing and the defense attorneys were saying that the judge had screwed up on the uh, instructions to the jury. The we jury. actually opened it with that yesterday because it was just so ridiculous. Um, they were saying that unilaterally the judge had told the jury in the instructions that they did not need to be unanimous when they came back with a verdict. But that's not what the judge said. The instructions basically said that it you don't need to on uh, agree on all of the methods that uh, or on what the primary method essentially was uh, to bring it up to the election interference charge. You don't have to be unanimous on that point, but you do have to be unanimous in rendering a verdict on the counts. So, right. like, it would be a pretty big deal if the judge all of a sudden said, uh, yeah, we're throwing out the concept of unanimous uh, jury convictions in their instructions to the jury. It might raise some legal issues. If it would have raised case. some legal issues because that's not the way it works in criminal cases. But what's interesting is you're going to hear all of this there's going to be so many different excuses for this. I mean, they're going to bring this stuff up on appeal. Um, people I have spoken to say it, it, it the, the, they don't think the appeals are going to work. Now, I will say right up front, too, I don't think Donald Trump is going to go to jail for this. Um, there, if you look into cases like this, and we're going to talk about the, you know how many cases are brought up like this, um, it, just in New York City, the punishments range from, you know, community service, pay a fine to going to jail, depending on how, you know, uh, how these people are situated, how many criminal convictions they've had in the past, et cetera, et cetera. Is there a history of this? I don't expect Donald Trump to go to jail, but he is a convicted felon. And, yep. and unless it's overturned, yeah. he's going to remain a convicted felon. And can't uh, vote for himself. And he cannot vote for himself in Florida. Oh my God! Even that's though he so shouldn't, funny. he's had his vote taken away. <laughs> because of Ron DeSantis <laughs> overturning that. Uh, Ron, uh, how dare you? You Ron. never get it right. <laughs> but here is um, Donald Trump's attorney. Now, here's the thing. This is an interesting exchange here because uh, for two reasons. One, you're an attorney. There has been a lot of criticism. In fact, we had a guest on Wednesday, uh, a professor of white collar crime, who was like, if I was the defense attorney, I would not have argued this case in the way they did. Mm -hmm. Going um, after Michael Cohen's credibility, as opposed to just basically saying this is a stretch for you to bring it up to a federal or a felony charge because of its, you know. Um, it wasn't just about Michael Cohen's credibility. It was that. Um, they were skeptical as to whether when Donald Trump said these are legal uh, services, whether Donald Trump would actually know, you know, would have examined that so right. specifically. And uh, then the, the, the second part being that, like, well, I mean, you know, maybe he, uh, you know, uh, just didn't have the intent to uh, uh, clear this up. He just, you know, hired his attorney and the attorney went ahead and did it. But nevertheless, um, there's criticism of the attorneys. And so if you're an attorney who's just lost, one of the things you want to do is go out there and make sure that, like, this doesn't ruin my career because I don't want to be considered a bad attorney. So maybe I won't take full responsibility for everything that was argued. But uh, also... Remember that you've argued that Donald Trump was not the type of guy who's going to look into specifics. Yeah. So you wouldn't have micromanaged any of this. So that leaves you as an attorney in sort of a dilemma. And but here is how it falls apart for uh, Donald Trump's attorney, um, Todd Blanche, who was on with uh, Jesse Waters. Now, remember, this is a friendly territory to help him. How involved was Donald Trump in his own defense? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, very involved. And he's a he, he's he's a smart guy. He he knows what he's doing. He he jokingly said to, to us a lot. Sometimes he wanted to be the litigator. You know, he wanted to be the one that was actually arguing because he's he's a smart guy and he knows what he's doing. We we made every decision together. We did, and there were things that he was frustrated with. You know, the judge several months ago, there was a, a, a we wanted to be able to argue. 
reliance of counsel, that we that, that, that to some extent President Trump was relying on his lawyer, and the judge didn't allow us to do that, and, and things like that, where he would really push us and, and and say, well, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? It was it was a, an honor for me to spend the last six weeks with him, defending him. It didn't work out. I mean, we got a bad result today. It's it's not over. All it's right, stop. Over. Okay, so. I just want it's not over. just parse out what the guy just said. Yeah. He said, Donald Trump was walking us through why we should argue that he was just relying on counsel. Mm -hmm. In other words, that like I was doing what my lawyer told me while this guy is explaining that Donald Trump was literally telling us what to do. Yeah. As his counsel. Right. So like we're to believe that when it came to paying off a um uh, a woman who he wanted to be silent from an affair that he had had 10 years earlier in that he didn't instruct his lawyer at that time to do all this stuff in certain ways so that it could be obscured but also to believe simultaneously in the exact same sentence that we got that idea from Donald Trump telling us what to do. It's oh, right. Attorneys. He's all across this. You can't make that case. It's Maybe that's why they didn't attempt it, right? Maybe that was a little bit why. Randall Eliasson, when he came on, the, the professor was saying that the defense felt very Trumpy. Like, maybe they did have to appeal to their client by calling everybody a liar and this and that. Maybe they were hamstrung by his own ego and the fact that this trial is not just a trial. It's an extension of his presidential campaign. I've known people who've known, like, uh, Donald Trump's uh, bankruptcy t attorneys and they're right. like w he, it's impossible to deal with him as a client because he just does what he wants to do and he won't listen to us and he goes in and he blows the case every time um, now with that said uh, I think that there was a lot of uh, surprise by people that there was unanimity on all 34 on the unit uh, oh, on yeah. the entire accounts a lot of people thought there would be at least one juror who might um hold out and there would be a hung jury i mean that was sort of like what i think everybody anticipated ted cruz was begging for it on tv yes i mean yesterday. regardless of the fact that you had one juror again who got all his news from truth social um and like the speed in which this verdict came back i mean we had we thought this was going to take a week or two yeah and so uh, we were completely uh, not anticipating this yeah i mean i've been on a jury i don't remember if we ever had a case that had 34 charges to get through but that would be like a big oh, we're gonna be here for a a couple days at least right um, it was and, what yeah. 10 hours total of deliberation when you took into account the doesn't day sound like they had a lot to deliberate like 20 minutes what is that average down to like 10 hours three yeah i don't i don't know how to do the math but but they yeah. moved through them. Yeah. Here is um, that same attorney, Todd Blanche, on CNN. And one of the things, the, the question is, you know, Donald Trump had said before the trial, I can't wait to testify. Mm -hmm. And um, to debate them. And debate them and <laughs> show them who's who and Labor show my credibility. Down. And uh, this is impressive. And I think this is, I don't know if uh, Blanche brings it up here. Well, uh, here is uh, a little Caitlin less Collins. friendly territory yeah. here and similar conversation. Right. Doing that. And that's where I think we have we have disagreements. We, we think there are a lot that we're not. Why did Donald Trump not ultimately take the stand here? Well, um, that's a very personal question to him and, and to, to, to me, honestly. And it's a I'm very offended. difficult question. Of course he wanted to testify. And I, I don't say that because that's what he has said. He wanted to get his story out. I think the judge had made some decisions um, before the trial or the day of the trial started about what what would be allowed to be asked of him by the by the prosecutors if he took the stand and some of those questions um, were, were, were really complicated to answer because there's still appeals going on and and so there's a lot of there's a lot of, of decision points that go into whether somebody testifies ultimately it's, it's his decision and he listened to us and, and he relied on our counsel and he 
uh, reached a decision that, that he that he thought was right, which I very much agreed with. So that means your counsel was for him to not take the stand. I'm not going to tell you what my counsel was. But you said oh. he relied on counsel and he went with that decision and he didn't take the stand. But ultimately, so it was his it. it was his decision. And I never say, and I think colleagues and folks that you have on here hopefully agree with me. I never say to somebody, "Don't take the stand." Right? That's a that's their decision, and that's a decision that they have to make. Uh, but but I want them to have a. a, a they all want to know what will happen on the good and the bad if they do take the stand. So no this. regrets on him not taking the stand. Look, the verdict came down a couple hours ago. I don't know if I have any regrets about anything yet. I'm still I'm still thinking things through, and I think so are so is he, and so is yep. so are everybody else around him. But at this point, I don't think that we that, that there was a conviction because he did not take the stand. When he was leaving, one thing he brought up were, were the witnesses who were not called. And he was saying that there could have been witnesses that would have helped make the case. We never saw Keith Schiller, Alan Weisselberg, some key figures here who got brought up a lot. Why didn't the defense call any of these witnesses? Well, because we happen to live in America and we don't have the burden of proof. And so there's not, that's not the point. That should, that's a question that is a loaded question that should not be asked of a defense attorney or a defendant. The question that we ask- Well, the there's a lot say, of questions, okay. And he's right. The defense does not have the burden of proof here. Right. But um, defense does bring up, I mean, does call witnesses in uh, a lot of criminal trials. If they think it's going to help their case. If they think it's going to help their case. And I suspect that, you know, the prosecutors felt like we've established this entire thing. Um, and we've, we have, we've made our case. And uh, we feel pretty comfortable with our case. Donald Trump did not want to testify because... I'd have to supposedly tell things that I don't want to tell. It's complicated. It's complicated. I wish it wasn't. And then why didn't you bring in like uh, the other people that could have exonerated you? Well, we don't. Why? Of course not. Because it's America. And here's Donald Trump uh, basically complaining about what was his decisions. The judge allowed them to go into everything that I was ever involved in, not this case, everything that I was ever involved in, which is a first. In other words, you could go into every single thing that I ever did. Was he a bad boy here? Was he a bad boy there? (laughs) And my lawyer said, what do you need to go through? And all you wanted to do is testify simply on this case, because I would have loved to have testified. To this day, I would have liked to have testified. But you would have been. I don't you would think have said so. something out of whack, like it was a beautiful sunny day and it was actually raining out. And I very much appreciate the big crowd of people outside. That's incredible what's happening. Oh, pause it. That's I it. That's appreciate it. the juxtaposition between him saying, "You say it's a very sunny day and it's raining out," and you get you get caught on that. Uh-huh. Incidentally, let me tell another lie. There's a lot of people out there in support of me. <laughs> Right. And just incidentally. Right. It would be. Uh, well, I guess he's saying he would be would have been tripped up there. But um, I, I wonder what those internal conversations were like about him testifying. I don't think he would have wanted to either. And I also think it was probably that guy's counsel. But they can't say that publicly. He's he has he gets tripped up by Caitlin Collins because, again, this is not a normal defendant. This is not a normal situation. Trump has to also manage the perception like very uh intensely afterwards and he needs his lawyer to be an extension of that because they're going to try and appeal it's so offensive right to ask that question of me uh because it, i want to make sure that you don't in any way pursue that line of questioning yeah because i don't want to be saying like uh, let's face it <laughs> he did a lot of things that were criminal and i don't want him having to lie about it on the stand it's so nuanced all these conversations i just we just don't have time for it we don't yeah i have no idea i mean like like, let's just sit with this for a second. He's the the we live we are in a two party system, and the presumptive nominee for one of those two major parties is a convicted felon who also has been impeached twice, found liable for sexual abuse, also found liable for defamation in that case, and has been found in a civil case to have committed <laughs> fraud, where there's hundreds of millions of dollars that he has to pay to the state of New York. 
And then there's also three other trials that he's in the midst of right now. Not to mention in the 90s, he used uh, undocumented Polish labor and got them uh, sick with his bestos. So. Well, as long as you don't ask me about the consent decree uh, when I wouldn't let black people rent into my apartments. Was I a bad boy? Oh, was yeah. I a bad boy here? Yeah. I'm sorry. It was raining out. That's why I needed a consent decree. And maybe he was a little bit of a bad boy when he was taking out a full page uh, ad in the New York Times to get the Central Park Five locked up by the very justice system that he's now saying is so unfair to him. Well, to be fair to me, that's how I got the contract to do the Central Park skating rink. So, eh. hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.